We are going to turn this boiler off. There we go. Now, even though this boiler is off, it does have a permanent pilot light, which is a small little gas light, which stays alight 24 seven. And a lot of estimates estimate that it could be up to nine, possibly even 12% of your energy bill, just lighting that small little bit there because it's similar to running your gas hob. It's like taking your smallest gas hob and putting it on simmer and leaving it on indefinitely. That never goes off. I switched off the electrics and that is still on. All right, so what that does is it stays on until you put on your heating and it uses that light there to ignite, essentially, um, to put it in layman's terms. How do we know what boiler we have? Over there, it says the model, right there, and it is a CF40. So as you can see, there's different um, GC numbers for similar models. That's our GC number there. So if you ever need parts or anything like that, that's the number you'd use. When you do want to reignite it, you have to push this in. This has a magnet in it. So ignite it, similar to how you would a cooker but you keep this held down because this has a magnet in it. Once the pilot light is lit, it keeps this open. This is electromagnetic, so the magnet will be kept open by a small voltage that's created by the fire, that little pilot light. This has been here a long time and has been serviced. Um, it is a carpet. Now the flame is actually just underneath here. Now, that is all a live fire. With look at look at all that stuff within there. There's just a whole bunch of stuff. All this just floating around, all in there. Imagine that floats out because it's only got a cover here. It's got a cover there. Imagine that floats out, lands on this carpet. What do you think will, will happen? So. I'm going to remove this carpet and this carpet is now no more. Now this is wood which is an ideal so I'm going to maybe chat to the owner about putting some non-combustible here. Look at this, this is apparently serviced by a very good company I mean, what the hell, they're just leaving all of this in here are they? All of that is just staying in there. So you still want to wear a mask but what you want to do is download a technical bulletin 070 and this just shows gas and electrical appliances known to contain asbestos, right? But it's dated 2012 for this one. I think this is the most latest one anyway. Um, and you just scroll down and you can see it's got Baxi there, so all the Baxis that, uh, you know, sort of have asbestos. So if you search for this, um, you've got all the glow worms that contain asbestos. Um, carry on further, and you just want to keep this on you if you're doing old boilers and things like that. Let's see what we find. God knows. Use gloves, people. But I'm a boss, so I don't need to. Right. I mean, it's old, so it's not going to be great. But as you can see on the back, all that dust is gone. We shut off the gas, which is here. And we're going to cap it, as you do. I'm going to unplug that. With the gas isolated, we can then undo the nut for the gas pipe. And then followed by the two butterfly nuts that are holding the burner in. We then just jiggle it around and pull it forward to release the burner. Just being careful not to bend anything, especially any wires that might get caught up. So what you're looking for on this is to make sure that the burner, all those holes look good. Right? You don't want them distorted, you don't want them cracked, you don't want the burner cracked. This is a very light brush, it's not wire. 
It's just nylon. And it's very soft. So before sweeping that up, just like that. And then get that off. So yeah, that's all good. The gas pipe is now reconnected and we switch on the gas at the meter. After that we can test it with leak detection fluid. We look all around it for bubbles and we test all gas connections including at the meter. With the pilot light now ignited we can put on our central heating demand which will then bring on the burner. Once the burner is on, we want it to run for at least five minutes to burn any loose particles that we've released into the burner. I then run my flue gas analyzer to check. However, this is not required if it is not in the MIs for older boilers. We then go through our spillage test and flue flow test in which we have to put uh, the room into the worst possible position that means closing doors windows and turning on any fans extractors tumble dryers and such the reason for that is we want it to simulate there being no fresh air because the windows are closed and we want the extractor fan to possibly pull the uh, fumes out so we put it in the worst condition to check that in fact uh, the chimney is still working as it should and there's more pull from the chimney than from any mechanical items such as an extractor fan. Uh, we're using the smoke to pull and we're checking that the chimney is pulling. We're then checking the entirety of the chimney to see if there's any leaks. So we're looking for smoke in the attic, in the loft, and we're making sure that the smoke is coming out through the chimney's terminal.